This presentation is brought to you by Therapeutic Articulations, the creator of the Mobilator orthopedic device and iOrtho mobile app. This presentation is about shoulder mobilizations. The mobilizations discussed will be an inferior glide to improve shoulder elevation, i.e. flexion, abduction, and scaption, and anterior and posterior glides to improve shoulder rotation, as well as contribute to the centering of the humeral head in the glenoid socket. More about that soon. A glenohumeral glide um, in the inferior direction to improve elevation involves draping the clinician's hand in a towel and putting that hand in the axilla for, this, for stabilization, and then grasping the distal humerus with the other hand to impart an inferior glide of the humerus on the glenoid socket. This technique can also be performed from a superior position. Here you see the clinician's superior and performing an inferior glide of the humerus on the glenoid while stabilizing proximally. Please note the, the alignment of the clinician's forearm with the direction of force that's desired. Here you see the mobilator device positioned to do an inferior glide of the glenohumeral joint using the HE or the green attachment. Here you see the green attachment donned in the custom dovetail slot. And now the device is lined up with the joint line and an inferior force is directed through the glenoid proximally, excuse me, through the humeral head on the glenoid proximally. And the clinician is then able to quantify that joint mobilization. Again, here you see a picture from the more proximal angle where you're able to see the readings on the device. That quantification allows you to provide more consistent joint mobilization techniques and to ensure that you are in the desired range for the grade of mobilization that you wish to perform. The concave convex rule for internal and external rotation states that the convex humeral head glides anterior on the concave socket for external rotation and posterior for internal rotation. However, in many instances, the humeral head is not centered in the socket. And so a posterior glide is needed to center that humeral head. This in turn allows that increased anterior translation needed for the humeral head to go through to facilitate external rotation. Here we see the positioning for a glenohumeral glide in the posterior direction. The patient is supine. The clinician's hand is underneath the scapula to create some space for the translation of the humeral head. You can do this with a wedge or a towel as well. You also see that the distal humerus, i.e. the elbow is um, supported on a towel and the arm is comfortably draped across the abdomen. The clinician's forearm is also aligned with the direction of force. As you know, the humeral head is not at a 90 degree angle in the sagittal plane, right? It, it is slightly angled forward in the plane of the scapula. So a posterior glide needs to be angled posterior lateral in order to achieve full possible motion. Otherwise you could um, hit the posterior aspect of the socket and have a inappropriate limitation in that posterior glide. Here you see a video of that posterior glide. Again, going posterior lateral. Hypothenar eminence is directing that force to the proximal humerus. 
here you see that same positioning being used with the mobilator device. The blue HD attachment is donned in order to quantify the posterior glides. Here you see that technique actually happening. The blue attachment slid into the dovetail and it locks into place. Joint line is identified. The device is aligned with the joint line. And there you see a posterior glide of the humerus on the glenoid. And you're able to see the quantification of that technique. Here's just another view. Kind of panned out a little bit. So you can actually see that posterior glide and the movement of the oscillations in a particular range of the joint mode. Here is the positioning for an anterior glide, again, to improve rotation. Uh, you see a wedge underneath the patient uh, proximally, again, to create some running room for the humerus with an anterior glide. You see the clinician's forearm angled anterior medial. Again, a video of that technique where the web space of the clinician's hand is going anterior medial. You see the forearm of the clinician aligned parallel to the direction of movement. This is the position for the anterior glide using the mobilator. Again, stabilizing proximal where the X is and mobilizing distal. Here's the video of that demonstration. Blue device. Joint line identified. Proximal stabilization. And then an anterior glide to facilitate rotation. And you can see the changing numbers on the screen to be able to give you quantifiable values on every technique. In addition, you can perform stoner clavicular glides. Uh, posterior glide can be used to improve horizontal abduction. This usually involves a thumb over thumb technique when doing it manually. And this allows you to have what's known as a dummy thumb to um, move the um, proximal clavicle on the sternum. Here you see the mobilator being used to perform this technique also. Again, this is uh, gives you the ability to quantify the movement. Put the device right over that distal clavicle or excuse me, proximal clavicle, device over the proximal clavicle, and you can do those mobilization techniques posterior to facilitate horizontal abduction. So this uh, video provided you with an overview of some shoulder mobilizations. If you're interested in more information, please visit the website at iortho.xyz, where you'll find even more videos and evidence of the use of the mobilator. Thank you.